just wanted to give a high level overview, obviously. Um, the Durban Amendment came out and uh, as part of Dodd-Frank and two of the key provisions were the interchange fee and the network exclusivity um, and where the Durban Amendment required that um, interchange fees for electronic debit transactions be reasonable and proportional to the cost incurred by the issuer. And also it prohibited issuers and networks from restricting the number of payment card networks on which you know, uh, electronic debit uh, transactions may be processed to at least um, multiple unaffiliated uh, networks. And so as the, the Durban Amendment also required the Federal Reserve to issue rules. Um, and so back in December 2010, the Federal Reserve issued a proposed rule. They went through, um, you know, they, they went through great um, pains to, after the proposed rule. They met with industry pr participants, perhaps some of you guys. They circulated surveys. They did a lot of in, uh, in information gathering. And in uh, June, July 2011, they came out with the final rule that was effective in 2000, October 2011. Quite, you know, not surprisingly, the merchants filed law lawsuit in uh, November 2011. And they made two uh, basic allegations. One, that the Durban Amendment limited the Federal Reserve's consideration for allowable costs to these incremental costs of authorization, clearing, um, and settlement costs, and that by including the other costs that the Federal Reserve included, they acted unreasonably. Their second allegation was related to network exclusivity, and they said that the Federal Reserve disregarded the plain meaning of the Durban Amendment and misconstrued the statute by requiring that all debit cards rather than transactions um, be operable with at least two unaffiliated payment networks.